Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownload Blog, and today we're taking a look at the iPad Air 4th generation that just recently came out from Apple. And it is the best iPad Air that Apple's ever made, and the first one that really competes with the iPad Pro. It's basically the iPhone XR version of the iPhone X. So in this video, we're going to talk about 15 to 20 different tips and tricks for getting started using the iPad and getting the most out of this experience. The first thing I want to note is that this blue color is kind of a grayish blue. It, in some lights, it looks really nice and blue. In some light, it looks kind of violet. Um, it's not a it's not a strong blue. It's not a stark blue. And I can even compare it to the iPhone 12's blue, and you can see there's a big difference there. This is uh, well a much darker blue. This is more of like a violet lilac blue. It doesn't look as good as I was hoping it would, but it is not bad. It looks like I have a little dent actually. Do you guys see that? Does that look like a little dent right there? Okay, so getting started with the information about the iPad Air 4, unlike the iPhone 12, Apple does include a charger in the box. Now, Apple actually gives you a 20 watt charger with this iPad out of the box, which is technically higher than the iPad Pro's 18 watt charger. Not that it'll make a big difference, but you do get a 20 watt charger with a USB-C to USB-C cable with this iPad, of course, because this does have USB-C on the bottom. Now, when I was testing this with my Zendur battery pack, which I've made a review on and it's really awesome, it does have a power meter and I got up to high 20s in terms of wattage when I was charging this device. When you're not doing much with the iPad, it's gonna be pretty low, so it shows about 15, 16 watts here. But as soon as I start doing something like, we'll say pulling up a baseball game, you should see the wattage start to creep up. All right, so right there, just hit 24 watts, and I've gotten it up to around 26 watts. Basically, all I'm saying here is that this can support a faster charger than the 20 watt charger that Apple gives you. So you can use a charger that comes with your MacBook Pro and it will charge your iPad up to about 30 watts, which is nice. So I'll leave a link down in the description to some of the best third party portable and fast chargers for the iPad if you want to charge your iPad just a little bit faster and a little bit more compact than what Apple gives you. Now, of course, because this is USB-C, that means you can charge other devices from your iPad. So for instance, I can plug in my iPhone 12 and charge it from the iPad Air, which is great. And because the iPad has such a good battery life, this is something you can actually do. And similarly, you can do this with the Apple Watch using the Lightning to Apple Watch adapter and more. Now, one thing to note is that this iPad will not charge your phone via MagSafe. It doesn't supply enough power to make the wireless charging on MagSafe work, so it's just something to keep in mind. Now, also because of USB-C, you can do things such as attaching USB-C SSDs, and I've compared recently a lot of really good SSD options. These are fast and reliable, and so I'll leave that review down in the description. But you can also get different hubs. I love this one from Hyperdrive. I can attach it right to the iPad, and it gives me HDMI, SD, micro SD, USB, and more. So even for this video right now, I am recording the audio from a USB-C hub on an iPad which is an amazing feature that you can do with the iPad Air 4. Next, this does support pretty much every keyboard that the iPad Pro supports. So if we clear out some of these accessories, I can show you that this is Logitech's Folio Touch case for the iPad, which is an awesome case with a trackpad and a function row, and it will work with this and has a cutout for the power button and touch ID up top, and I will do a review of this soon. But you can also use Apple's Magic Keyboard Folio with his iPad Air 4. So you can see that the iPad Air 4 is on the Magic Keyboard, and this works very well. Now in terms of styli, of course, this does support the Apple Pencil second generation, which is actually this one, which is a fantastic device for taking notes and more. And a couple cool tricks with this is that if you are in the lock screen, you can actually just tap on the lock screen with the pencil and it will pull up an instant note. You can also do that from your notification center, just like that. Now, if you don't want to spend $130 for a stylus with this iPad, you can actually go for something cheaper. So these look just like the Apple Pencil 2, uh, but these are $25 and $30. I've made a video talking about these, and they still attach magnetically and everything. So I'll leave that link down below if you want to check out some of these cheaper styli for the Apple Pencil. So next, of course, the iPad Air 4 does have Touch ID now at the top. So that is how you're going to unlock your iPad. 
Now what you can do if you go into the Touch ID and Passcode settings, Apple does limit you to how many fingerprints you can add. However, there is a way of getting around this if you add multiple fingers at the same time when you're registering a finger. So I can do my middle finger, and then my ring finger, and then my pinky, and then my pointer finger, and then my thumb. Like that and complete. So now my pinky finger, which I only have done for finger three, you can see it does show for finger three, and so does this finger, and so does this finger. So this is a way of adding a lot more fingers to the iPad. Now a nice feature to customize with the Touch ID settings would be turning off password autofill. Again, that's a personal preference for me, but I like when I'm using autofill on the iPad to not have to verify it with my fingerprint. I like it to just automatically autofill my saved passwords, so I turn this feature off. Now one of the things I did on this iPad was reduce motion. So if you've never used an iPad Pro, you probably won't need this, but for me, the animations do appear a little bit jagged on this device because it is using a 60 hertz rather than a 120 hertz display. So I went ahead and turned on reduce motion, which just makes the animations a little bit smoother for me, and I don't notice the lower refresh rate display as much. So if you're someone that also notices a little bit of a jitter and a lag and just not as smooth animations, you can go ahead and turn on reduce motion. And Siri on this device, just like we see in the iPad Pro, is activated using the power button. And if you want to power off the device, you hold down either of the two volume buttons as well as power at the same time and you'll get the power off screen right there. Now this iPad does have tap to wake, very simple, and you can turn that off in the settings if you don't like it, but it's a great way to just wake up your device just by tapping it. Next, just like I talked about in the iPhone 12 tips video, I find the wallpaper is pretty boring on this device. The stills are old and boring and the dynamic are old and boring as well. So what I did for this was get some iOS 14.2 wallpapers that are going to be coming out soon. As you can see it on both my lock screen and my home screen, I think they look really good. I'll bring that back. You can see that. And you can actually download these from idownloadblog.com under their wallpaper settings, and you'll find a whole list of other great wallpapers that you can download as well. So next is just really awesome multitasking. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up music and then I'm going to open up files right next to it. So I have those side by side, and then I'm going to go ahead and go into my MLB app and pull up a baseball game. And I'm gonna go back into the previous app. So you see I have picture in picture. And then I can also slide over an app from the side. So now all of a sudden, I have music over here. I have files over here. I have Safari over here, and I have Picture in Picture Baseball over here for four apps open at the same time. And I can switch between different applications on the side over here, or drag it to the left and move this over here and resize these and do whatever I need. So this is just super powerful and a really great feature on the iPad. Next, so of course Spotlight Search has been redesigned with iPadOS 14, which is awesome. You just swipe down and you get this overlay of Spotlight Search. But if you want to actually get a floating keyboard with a quick type on it, you can just pinch in and you get this movable floating keyboard, which is awesome. It's basically an iPhone's keyboard and then you can quick type. So I can say iPhone, I've got iPhone there and that is really nice. Now you can also hold on the space bar and move the cursor around. So as you can see right there, and you can also expand it and do two fingers and use the cursor again. So that is a really nifty and powerful feature. And one of the things I like to do on an iPad is scan documents and open them in Notes or GoodNotes or Notability or Flexel. And to do this, you can go into the Notes app and do it, or you can go into Control Center and then long press on Notes and you can scan a document right from that menu. Now, if you're going to be using your iPad at night, you're going to want to go into accessibility and accessibility shortcut and turn on reduce white point. So then if you triple click the power button, it'll reduce the brightness of your screen and you can bring this down super low, which is great for nighttime reading. As you can see, you can barely see that because of the lights around here. But if this was a dark room, this would be pretty nice. And then of course, you can long press the brightness slider and you can see options for dark mode which is nice for using it at night, as well as night shift, which will warm up your display, which is better for your eyes to prevent blue light strain. 
And then the last tip is another accessory. With this iPad, of course, you can use trackpad and mouse support. So this is actually Logitech's new Anywhere 3 mouse for Mac and iPad, which is really great and I'll be reviewing that soon. So you can connect this to your iPad Air 4 or another mouse of your choice or a trackpad as well as a Bluetooth keyboard and these will be awesome for navigating your iPad, getting around, using the cursor and more. If you don't want to settle on any keyboard cases with trackpads, you can always just use a mouse and those work super well. So those are some tips and tricks and general knowledge for your iPad Air 4. Let me know what you think and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.